What's up guys, Demon Hunter 1, 2, and 2, and it's List Day! Ah, uh, yes, List Day, and, uh, it, uh, you're probably wondering why I'm not in front of the green screen. Well, I decided to change things up, do a different set, and, uh, hopefully it ends up working pretty good. Um, uh, part of it is it should look kind of cool. I gotta figure out the lighting still, so if this looks, like, washed or something, just bear with me. I still gotta figure it out. Ah, it's really bright. But have no fear, I can still do green screen stuff. My roommate helped me, uh, put my green screen on these canvases so I can like stick stuff on them like that. I don't know what's on this thing. I'll put it in post. And those bad boys can just hang on the top of the shelf and it'll be like I have my green screen uh, up anyway. So for like News Geo and stuff, uh, have no fear uh, for those who actually watch News Geo, <laughs> I will still be able to do that effect. And the cool thing about this setup, it's like it looks very YouTube-y and uh, you know, it kind of gives you a glimpse into things that I like. So let's hope this looks okay. I I can't wait to edit it. But anyway guys, uh, today's list is gonna be a, a fun Z1 that the Discord had uh, requested a couple times, and that's uh, good cards that are stuck in bad decks. This is a popular list to do when you're a yu tuber because, I don't know, it's just fun to talk about, and I don't think I've done it before, so let's go. The rules for this list are basically the card just needs to be really solidly designed and practically have a near broken effect, but the only thing that's holding it back is the fact that it's stuck in an archetype or a deck or a playstyle that just really doesn't benefit it or it, it's like a tank with no treads, you know? Like it's not really a tank no more, even though it's a tank. We had to have some discussion about certain boss monsters from certain decks, whether or not they would be like, you know, ah, oh, they're so good, but the deck's bad, but like they're like impossible to summon. So it's not really the fact that the deck is bad, it's just that they're really hard to play. So it is a bit difficult to say, is it the archetype that's holding it back or is it it's is, is it's actual card design just kind of cruddy despite the fact that if it was to resolve it's like some blowout so that the discord and I got the list culled down to a solid 10 interesting cards for you without further ado number 10 interesting thing about this new setup is I can't just shift myself over in post and stick the card next to me I need to literally move this way I hope to God that the knickknacks and crap keeps the camera in focus. UA Power Jersey! It is my video after all. However, I would contend that uh, UA Power Jersey is actually the card that Ryan and I had kicked back and forth uh, that is the impetus for the list. Because frankly, UA Power Jersey is a fantastic next to broken equip spell stuck in a really dumb deck. What do? You can only equip it to a UA monster, that monster gains 1,000 attack power and defense, I, I guess. If it battles an opponent's monster, any battle damage is doubled, which <laughs> is nuts. Not only does it bestow an attack boost, any damage you're getting out of that boost is being doubled. And if the equipped monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle, it can make a second attack. Now, he's, there's a lot of lot of doublings going on. It's not going to take very long for this card to really start piling up the damage, pushing your OTK threshold. And when you have a card like Donker, who can do piercing damage, it really does open up your options for being able to hit your opponent with that double damage twice in a row. Issue is, UAs are super clumsy and, and you know, yeah, sure, you got uh, Slugger, which prevents your opponent from really doing anything once it declares an attack, but you gotta, like, struggle your way to the battle phase and, and just hope your opponent lets you get that far, and that's... Uh. In a much better deck that can really play through some disruption, this kind of just out-of-nowhere OTK potential, it would be ridiculous. Especially in a deck that has a higher power ceiling than the UA monsters that tend to be. But if you're playing a deck that's got like natural 3k beaters, 4k beaters in it, that's this thing is pushing way, way, way too much damage. Number 9 is Dragon Maid Hospitality. You can special summon one Dragon Maid monster from your hand or graveyard in defense position, then you can send one Dragon Maid with the same attribute but different level from your deck to the graveyard. You can only activate this once per turn. Oh boy, okay, well, being able to special summon a monster out of your hands a la uh, ancient rules is inherently nifty, but it is a minus one. It's it's not the greatest kind of effect in the world. 
However, the fact that it doubles as that or a Monster Reborn is extremely versatile. So that way the card's not dead when you're going first. Not only that though, one copy of Hospitality sets up the next copy of Hospitality because it mills you a Dragon Maid out of your deck. So this card is like a Monster Reborn mushed together with a Foolish Burial, uh, both of which are currently limited to one. So. If this was in a good deck, this would be an extremely useful effect. Any other dragon deck. <laughs> Obviously, uh, the same attribute, different level thing would have uh, uh, middling success depending on the deck. Like in Burning Abyss, uh, they're all level 3, so you're milling the ritual? Ugh. But in like, I don't know, Spiral, this... <laughs> this would be stupid. So, you know, it, it really, I just gotta change that one word, and the card's ban-worthy. Nice. I really hope I'm not, like, too small on the screen. I gotta, I, I gotta play with this. Bear with me. Viacroid Connection Zone! I never would've thought I'd be giving Viacroids any kind of props, but this is pretty good, actually. Fusion summon a Viacroid monster from your extra deck using uh, materials on your hand or your field. It's just polymerization. But if you do, that monster cannot be destroyed by card effects and its effects cannot be negated. <laughs> Change this to invoked and Mechava becomes one giant pain in the ass. It makes sense though that Viacroids would have such a card because like most of their fusions, if I remember correctly off the top of my head, don't really do very much and like their big one is like actually arguably bad. It's incredibly disrespectful. So bestowing them some sort of protection via the fusion spell is really kind of handy. It's also kind of clever. But yeah, any other fusion deck ever would appreciate this card a hell of a lot more than Viacroids. Oh. Number seven is Fallen Paradise. Yeah, you really thought that uh, uh, Spiral Resort was a good field spell? This is basically the same thing. Your opponent can't target your Sacred Beast dudes. Uh, Uriah, Hammond, and the other one. <laughs> Raviel, or their fusion thing, Armitile. Oh, sweet, a field spell that protects my monsters from targeting. Hmm. Also, your Sacred Beast dudes can't be destroyed by card effects. Oh, wow, that's, that's like even more protection. Woo. Also, once per turn, as I hard once per turn, if you control one of the Sacred Beast dudes, you can draw two cards. <laughs> this this field spell's stupid. It bestows a very similar non-targeting protection like Spiral Resort, which is currently at one, to all of the guys in the archetype, but it also gives you a non-destruction thingy. And sure, one can argue that Spiral Resort's search is better than this thing's draw too because the search gets you the card that you absolutely need to make your combo plays where this thing is just two rando cards, but I would almost always want the two rando cards because my deck's built properly. Uh, more advantage equal better play? So yeah, like this card's kind of stupid. It's just <laughs> stuck in a really cheesy deck. The deck is presumably going to get better with the release of the, the deck they're they're gonna give us for this thing. So, hey, we might actually have something because, you know, the monsters might be dumb, but this field spell's great, so there's some, there's some good bones here. Maybe. Maybe. Abyss Script Opening Ceremony. The fun thing about this list is, like, we can just pull some really obscure cards out of our butts and actually give them, a, give them a, a, a chance to shine. Gain 800 life points for each Abyss actor you control. Uh, okay, well that's kind of stupid, but bear with me. If this set card is destroyed by your opponent's card effects a while you control a face-up Abyss actor monster in your extra deck, so a pendulum monster that was left the field and then went to your extra deck, Draw until you have five <laughs> cards in your hand! Oh, you can only use this once per turn. You know when your opponent's like popping your back row and they accidentally wake the dragon and now they're staring down Ultimate Falcon? And you're like, aha! That's what you get for your MSTs, jerk! Well, like, if this was in a better deck, this would really, really punish uh, your opponent's back row destruction in an extremely similar way. Like hell, if it was just like a generic pendulum monster instead of abyss actors, that would actually be 
a, a solid side deck option. It's a little gimmicky and it's a little cheesy, which is why I kind of threw it in the middle of the list, but in the right deck, in the right format, you could really just really get your opponent with this bad boy. Draw five, man! Crystal Abundance! Oh man, this one is hard to talk about because Crystal Beasts work in a very uh, weird way. I wasn't exactly sure where to put this one because the car is real good, but Crystal Beasts are super weird! So it's like really hard to just, you can't just like change the name of the archetype in the card because then the card doesn't really work. So send four Crystal Beast monsters that are in your spell or trap zone to, to a graveyard. There, that, that right there is why it doesn't work in other archetypes because other archetypes don't do that and all cards on the field. As long as you've got them four crystally boys in your back row, you can just pfft, nuke the entire board. That's front row and back row, and it's not a destroy, it's a send, so you might get around some floating effects that way. That's pretty neat. And then you can special summon a bunch of crystal beasts up the number of cards you sent from your opponent's field to the graveyard with this doohickey. So like you're replacing all that advantage you lost potentially, cause I don't think you'd play this against like one card. You play this against a full board and hope it sticks. This is basically just kaiju slumber on steroids, basically. Again, it's hard to talk about in another deck cause other decks don't work like that. I could put in my aqua actresses and change it to aquarium. <laughs> They all float. Ugh, that wouldn't be good. It would just be funny. If you want to get cheesy, I suppose you could just say, you know, send any four cards from your archetype from the field to the graveyard, ignoring the position they're in, whether it's a monster or a spell or trap zone. Obviously, that makes the card work a little better in other decks. And then it doesn't really matter what you put it in, as long as that's a floaty, spammy deck. Abundance of danger would th would make this card like actually work, and that I. <laughs> <laughs> you know, draw them. I could send that resume any day now. Here's another archetype I never would have thought I would have ever talked about in a video about things being good. That's Ojamas. Damn, Ojamas. Yeah, Ojamas are not a good deck. The one thing that they do, spam a bunch, uh, but like they're just little stupid vanillas that don't do anything. With Link's summoning and stuff being like uber generic, yeah, you could figure out something to do with them, but even still, you need a little more go-go, and Ojamatch is all the go-go and Momo. Oh, why did I say that? What does it do? Send one Ojama card from your hand or face up on the field to the graveyard to add one Ojama monster with a different name and one uh, <laughs> armed dragon <laughs> monster from your deck to your hand. Then, then after that effect resolves, you can normal summon one of those cards. It gets a guy. It lets you get a card out of your hand into the graveyard and then adds one monster from one archetype and then one monster from an completely different one. Meaning like you can totally like chain this to itself and then send the first off the second's effect till it's like, it's so dumb. <laughs> Cause it's not a hard one's return. Oh, and then during your main phase, you can banish this thing from your graveyard to target, what is it? Like three of your Ojamas? Ojamas? Yeah, you can target three one of your banished Ojamas, three of your Barack Obamas and shuffle them into your deck and draw a card. This card does so much. It is a wall of text. And all of these effects are good, they're just stuck in Ojamas. There is almost no other card in the game that lets you search a guy from an archetype and then a guy from like a different archetype. Like, you know, I think those World Legacy cards can get like Mech Knights and, or World Legacy or Brawlers or something or whatever, but you gotta pick one. Nah, this gets you two. Obviously, like, it makes a little bit more sense if you've ever watched GX, cause, cause the Chess. His deck is a weird mush of Ojamas and armed dragons. So it, it it's like Konami just created a card. They're like, how do we get his stupid hybrid deck to work? Because those two archetypes are completely disparate and have nothing to do with each other. Oh, let's just print a broken card to just... <laughs> now kiss. This is that. Just switch any switch those two archetypes for any other two archetypes, and then we have like all of the fun Yu-Gi-Oh ever, because then we can just play all the weird hybrids we want. This card's dumb. Daki, the graceful Mayakashi. What does Daki do? Daki do a level two, and oh boy, she's a two. Nerd. And a zombie. 
Oh man, this card's like just good on its own. It's not just a good card stuck in a bad deck. It's it's actually just a good card. Well, uh, except like, you know, the zombie deck, this particular zombie deck isn't the greatest thing in the world. Like zombies, like just generic zombies are better. This could do so much in another deck. What's she do? When a Mayakashi monster is summoned from your extra deck to your field while this thing's in your graveyard, special summon this card from your graveyard. And then you get locked into Mayakashi monsters. That's it. That's the effect. I know you're waiting for me to say you can only activate this card once per turn, but she doesn't say that. Imagine if this thing was like a Goki. If this thing was a Goki, like, they would, they could like extra link with like the brickiest hand in the world. This thing just keeps coming back. Like she's so stupidly free and she just keeps going. Like if the worst part is that you get locked into her freaking extra deck monsters. Presumably if you were to stick her in a deck that had good extra deck monsters that you'd give a damn about making, this thing would be stupid because it's it's a tuner, it's a level two, it's a zombie. There's a lot else going for it. Like, blah. like even if you're just linking it away, you don't even have to synchro spam. But could you imagine if like, this thing was like a speed roid? If this thing was a speed roid, that'd be stupid. Master will fly. Yeah, I don't know. This card's, that deck isn't very good. So she's probably not a problem, but like she, if they got a, if this deck ever gets like a good card, she could really be a big problem. Ugh. Number two is Mischief of the Time Goddess. Mischief of the Time Goddess might also be like num high or it, like number one on a list of really weird cards. The way this card works and is designed is like super strange. It's so strange that like they can't even code it for YGO Pro because I don't think they even know how to do it because this thing just says, hey, you know those rules for the game Yu-Gi-Oh? Just don't worry about them and just do this instead. And it's, it's like not even remotely how the game functions. So, yeah. <laughs> this quick play spell card says, neither player can activate cards in response to this activation. Oof, spell speed four. Oh, that's a good start. Cannot be activated as chain link two or higher, but it's a quick play. What? At the end of the battle phase, if all the monsters you control are Valkyrie monsters, minimum one, send this card to the graveyard. Also, immediately after this effect resolves, skip to the start of your next turn's battle phase. <laughs> what? And if you do that, you cannot activate Mischief of the Time Goddess uh, until the end of that turn. Okay, so none of that makes any sense. Let's unpack this really quick. Number one, you can't make a chain link two or higher despite the fact that it's a quick play spell. Uh, that's weird. Number two, at the end of the battle phase, presumably if all your monsters are Valkyries, this thing sends itself to the graveyard before it finishes resolving its effect, which is, again, not how Yu-Gi-Oh works. And then not only that, it skips the entire turn to the next turn's battle phase. And then that weirdo thing at the end is just to say that like you can only use it once per turn, but that wouldn't make sense because it's actually another completely different turn. So you can't use it till the end of that turn, but the card can only be used during the battle phase. So uh, it's just can't be used again until the next, next turn. That's what that's trying to do. Now we can't just say, all right, let's simplify and just say you get two battle phases a turn because it doesn't work like that. It skips to your next battle phase. So let's say you normal and pendulum shokan in your main phase one and then you play this stupid thing during your battle phase, you go to main phase two, which is actually main phase two of an entirely different turn, and you can normal and pendulum shokan again. <laughs> That's really nuts. Can you see why they can't put this card in YGO Pro? They don't know how to code it. Now like the chain link tooth or higher thing and the sends itself to the graveyard like before it's done resolving thing. It's just like uh, to prevent you from uh, looping it somehow, I guess, maybe. So you can't like chain one to itself or I don't know. It's gotta be some cheesy thing like that. They just made it work as weird as possible just so you can literally only use the one until like another turn. But yeah, uh, the problem with this card is that Valkyries aren't very good so they can't utilize it too well. Put this in any other deck ever at all, and all of a sudden you start having some problems. Even if the card just gave you a second battle phase, that alone would be just ridiculous. So having two battle phases means you can make half as much board and get 
the same amount of damage. That's a lot of damage. This thing basically is like another three extra monsters on your board. That's like really good. This card's just kind of stupid. Honorable mention. Venmanaga, the deity of snake people. <laughs> Venmanaga, the deity of poisonous snakes. What does this wall of text do? Cannot be normal summoner set, must first be special summoned by the stupid trap card. What's that called? Rise of the Snake Deity. And it cannot be special summoned by other ways except by its own effect. It's a big semi-nami monster. A big one. This card gains 500 attack for each reptile monster in your graveyard. This card cannot be targeted by and is unaffected by spells, traps, and monster effects. Like, you can't even, like, lance it and just have the lance whiff. Nah, you can't even do that to start with. You can't target, and even if you could, it's not gonna do anything anyway. Wow, uh, she's invincible. Which means the only way to get rid of her is to either kaiju her, which is a little anachronistic because those are much newer than the card than this card, or like, uh, kill her in battle. But if she's killed by battle, you can banish a reptile from a graveyard to special summon her back to the field. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, sure, she comes back with a little bit less attack power, but that makes her even more annoying to get rid of. She's got even a battle protection built in. This card is like a really, really, really solid boss monster. And this card's old, so like, all those stupid extra deck monsters we spend so many resources to make that make your opponent want to shoot themselves because it's like, this isn't fun, interactive Yu-Gi-Oh! You made a big dumb thing I can't deal with. This is their grandma. Not only that, but when she inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can place a Hyper Venom counter on her, and then, with, what is it, like three of them? Yeah, and when she gets three of them on her, you just win the duel. She's got a win condition built into her. So what's her problem? This card seems like it's stupid and broke. It's in Venoms, kinda. This card is in Venoms, kinda. She's kind of her own archetype, but she's kind of a support archetype for the Venom archetype, but the Venoms don't actually really do anything because this thing uses Hyper Venom counters instead of just regular Venom counters, so there's really nothing tying the two together except for the fact that Venoms are reptiles. Honestly, you could run her in any reptile deck. Snake Rain just gives her the, the biggest p So yeah, she's kind of stuck in her own stupid archetype and by association, another stupid archetype that are both really, really bad. It's incredibly disrespectful. Not only that, but the trap card that summons her uh, there's a, it, it requires you to like get another boss monster killed just to use it, so that's a big clumsy mess. So yeah, she's honorable mention because she herself is extremely good, but uh, she's just stuck in another bad archetype. However, because the trap is all so bad, it's hard to say like, you know, if we put her in, I don't know, uh, Burning Abyss, would she get any better? I'm not sure because the trap card still stinks, and that means we have to try to change the trap card too, and that kind of weirds out the rules of the list. So she's an honorable mention just because I think she deserves it. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout, you can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. Number one, though, it's another it's another win con card, so that's that's fun. Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief. I absolutely love the card's artwork. Ada, ada. Oh yeah. I actually really like Ghost Tricks. I wish they were better. Uh, because Angel of Mischief is actually a really, really solid card. Angel of Mischief is a generic rank 4 XC monster that requires two level 4 monsters. However, it also can be XC summoned by just slapping it over another Ghost Trick XC monster. Except itself, because that'd be stupid. So she's got the same cheesy summoning condition as Utopia the Lightning and Cyber Dragon Infinity. Both of which are fantastic freaking cards. Worth turning and detach a material from her to add one Ghost Trick Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. Ha! Oh, yeah! The uh, XC monsters that do Rota stuff are, like, really good. King of the Feral Imps is good. Thing with the, that does the rock guys, I like, don't remember what it's called. This thing. That's good. It's good because it lets you, it's a good extender. Because if your deck's kind of working and you can make this thing, you can then keep going. 
But what's cool about her is if she doesn't get monsters, she gets spells and traps. Which is like really nice because if your deck is a good deck and has something like an Infernity Barrier, this effect is disgusting. But it's a ghost trick. But she does have this one weird effect where if she has 10 materials stuck to her, you win the game. Just That's cool. And once per turn, you can take a ghost trick guy out of her hand and her. Oni-chan, anate no shirio o watashi ni tempu shizirikai. In theory, so that you could try to accrue 10 material to win. Danger, angel of mischief. Boom. A thousand times better. Ooh. Just keep sticking stuff on her, yeah, make her a spiral, they would be able to do this in no time. What's even better about this card is there is actually an FTK associated with the card. It's cheesy and dumb and you'll never do it, but it does technically exist with the given card pool. Meaning, if you put her in a better deck that makes that FTK turn from cheesy never gonna happen to, hmm, it might depending on what deck you stick it in. Ada, ada. She does a lot. She's got a win con built into her. And if all she did was just search the spells and traps, she would still be a fantastic card. That artwork, though. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoyed the new background. I hope the colors are okay. Like I said, all these lights are super bright, and, and they're harsh white because they make the green screen work really well. But I don't know if they're illuminating the, the, the shelves well. I got I to gotta play with it. But this is a good test run. It's a fun video. So, you know, leave your comments down below. Uh, uh, constructive critiques would actually be welcome because I'm in uncharted territory at this point with my Philip DeFranco background. Oh, man, I should have started the video with like, what's up, you beautiful bastards? But I didn't think to do it. Shit, next time. But anyway, guys, <laughs> that was the video. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, if you don't troll the metal wheel, I will see you guys next time. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my totally rad dueling. Watching more of these videos is almost as fine as Taya's ass? What? I'm not saying that. Fine. Then it's time to duel.